I recently visited New York Times bestselling author Steve Barry to learn about his new book, The Malta Exchange. Steve and his wife, Elizabeth, gave me a tour of their beautiful St. Augustine home and explained how their world travels influenced their home decor and Steve's writing. Welcome to our house. We're so excited to have you here. Um, you're going to see a lot of things from our journey with Steve writing the books and from the research that we do and the trips that we go on. We have one rule in this house. The rule is everything in the house has to have some meaning to it so that when we look at it, we remember something. So we leave a hole wherever there, something needs to go until we find the right thing to go there. So I thought you might like to see something from Steve's very first book, The Amber Room. And this is maybe one of the most special pieces in the house. Honey, why don't you tell me? Yeah, this is Amber from the reconstructed Amber Room. I was there in the 1990s. The man had not been paid in over a year. And so they sell these little, he makes these mementos, sells them in order to get money to live off of. The man spent two hours, spent all afternoon with me, tell, taught, teaching me all about the Amber Room. I knew nothing about it. Without him, I could have never written the novel. When I was done, I gave him a hundred dollar bill and he started to cry. He had, because that's more than he would have been made in the whole year. And he was the chief restorer. He was the chief restorer. Yeah. When we went back a few years ago, he had died and they have a little memorial now and a, and a painting of him there. But without him, there would have been no book. I think of him every time I see this. It's a really cool clock. They're only found on the island of Malta, and I had it specially made from a guy whose family has been making them for 400 years, and he's the last one. His daughters have no interest in doing it, so he's it. And he hand carves this and make it. It took 18 months for him to make it, but I was enthralled by them there. They're the only place in the world they exist. So now we're actually in our bathroom, which I know sounds a little bit crazy, but it's a very special room for us when it comes to the books because there's a lot of meaning in this room. So why don't you tell them about yeah. the bathroom? Well, if you'll look up here on the walls, you can see this artwork all over the place. And what this is, is this is the point of view art. In all of my books, when the point of view changes, I have a little piece of artwork that signals there's a change in the narrator. And each book has a different one. So this is from the Jefferson Key right here. Uh, this is from Romanoff Prophecy. Uh, this is uh, Amber Room up here. Uh, Link. King's Deception over there. King's Deception yeah. here. Emperor's, Emperor's Tomb. Tomb. Paris Vendetta. The new one, for, oh, for the Malta Exchange right there. Malta one's here. Yeah. And uh, we have a local artist. She comes once a year and she puts, the, uh, she puts one up. Uh, no more though, she moved away. So this will be, be all. But it just gives us a little reminder when we look at the wall. It's kind of cool. So this room is our dining room and it's very important because we base the entire thing around this tapestry and that painting. So Steve will tell you about these. This is from the Cluny Museum in, in Paris, which is my favorite museum there. It's a medieval museum in an old monastery that they have. And there's a whole sequence in the Paris Vendetta that all takes place in the Cluny Museum. And at the Lady in Unicorn. At this, this which from. is where this came yeah. from. And so we got that there and so we built this room around it. And this over here is very special because it's a Smithsonian Castle in Washington. Uh, I served on the Smithsonian Library's Advisory Board for six years, and uh, I, I'm, I'm an emeritus member now. My time is up on the board, so I serve as an emeritus member from now on, but I really enjoyed it. We oversaw the 22 libraries in the Smithsonian system. It's really cool, and the Lost Order really came from that experience. After the home tour, Steve explained why travel is an essential component of his writing process. There's at least one trip per book for research purposes. That sounds like fun. It's really not. They're very stressful times because we have to go and find what we're looking for. If we knew what we were looking for, we wouldn't have to go. So we have to find it when we're there. But usually along the way, we come across something interesting, something that strikes our fancy, something that kind of catches our attention. It ha I say it has to speak to me. If it talks to me, I kind of bring it home with me, yeah. And then let's talk about the new book that's out right now, The Malta Exchange. It's different because you always have history in there, but this time you're tying into religion. Yes, I'm back to to religion uh, and something in religion I've never dealt with before. Uh, it's a little unique. I think it will shock the reader. It's true and it's, it's, it's uh, one of those things that like, wow, I never knew that. So uh, the Malta Exchange harkens back to my, my book, The Templar Legacy, which is still my largest selling book. This one kind of harkens back to that where Cotton's on a, a grand European adventure. That sounds amazing, and I know that you're always very busy. What's the next adventure for Cotton Malone? Oh, he's headed to Poland, which is one of my favorite places in the world, right here. See, this little piece of salt right here? This came from the salt mines just outside of Krakow, and Cotton is gonna find his way down into those salt mines. It's gonna be a very interesting adventure for him. It's called the Warsaw Protocol. It'll be out a year from now. All right, well, thank you so much for your time, and again, to opening up your doors and allowing us into a little bit of you. Thank you.